In today's video, we're going to tie a fly called the crease fly. It's a small little popper pattern used in salt water and also for bass. First thing we're going to start with is a Gamagatsu SL11 3H hook. You can also use an SL12S hook for larger game and some 6 uh white thread. I'm using Uni, but you can also use Vivas. The first material we're going to start with is some white bucktail. And we're just going to take this bucktail and cut a fairly generous clump here and pull out any long stray fibers. We're going to measure out a tail that's at least one and a half times the length of the shank of the hook. I want it to hang back there a decent ways past the bend of the hook. So I just kind of roughly measure it out and then I'm going to trim my bucktail to roughly my desired length. Then we can tie all that bucktail in here near the eye of the hook. I leave a little bit of room. We don't need to go all the way forward to the eye on this hook. I keep about an eye's length away from the eye of the hook. So we're just going to capture all that bucktail and wrap back up onto it all the way back there to the bend. You can trim out kind of any stray fibers, or just cover them up with thread. It's not really a big deal with this fly if you have a few fibers showing. Because all this is going to be covered up by our body. And then just to make it make sure you get a nice good proportions on the fly. You can take the body that you've cut and just kind of push, basically put it on the body and make sure it's roughly the right length. And to make your body, all I've done is I've taken a piece of two millimeter foam here and I cut a big square that's at least twice the gap of the hook. That way when you fold it over it'll be roughly the gap of the hook. And then all I've done is I've just folded it over in half and I've just taken my scissors and just kind of cut uh, the back uh, of the fly at, a, at an angle there. And I want to leave a little bit of room for our tail to kind of stick out um, at that kind of blunt edge right there at the back. And then you can just crank those out and do, you know, a dozen of them or so at a time. That way you don't have to sit there and cut one for each fly. The next material we're going to use is just some extra lamp micro flashaboo in a pearl color and we're just going to tie this in right on top of the shank of the hook and I usually kind of tie a couple strands in kind of on one side of the top of the hook in the middle and then I wrap forward and then double it over that really locks it in and keeps it from coming loose then you can trim your flashaboo to the length of the tail. Now what I've kind of started to do with some of my crease flies is I've taken my thread and I've wrapped underneath the entire tail and I'll take a wrap of thread around the entire tail. This will just kind of help keep the tail together. kind of at an upward angle as well. That way it doesn't all just get smashed down and spread out through the fly. So there you can kind of see it all sticks up against my uh, foam end of the crease fly there. And then you can just make sure everybody's nice and even and smooth. You really want a nice smooth head and body on this fly. That gives you a good base to glue the foam to. Then you can whip finish. Then you can take your foam body and you can really do a crease fly a couple different ways. You can do a little shorter body and you can overlay the foam just behind the eye or you can cut a little bit longer body and you can overlay the foam over the eye and this also kind of helps split um, the foam end and keep it open uh, because the eye 
kind of prop uses is kind of a prop uh, and props that foam open. And that's usually how I tie mine is actually over the eye of the hook. So we're going to take a little bit of zap a gap here. And we're just going to lay a bead of zap a gap running along each side of the fly. You've got to be really careful you don't overdo it. I don't try to add too much to the top of the fly either. I'm just adding it to each side. Then I like to take the fly and turn it upside down. I'm just going to take my foam and I'm just going to pinch it into place with both fingers here. I'm going to hold it there for several seconds making sure I get a nice good even bond. You can always lay a little bit more glue down in there if it didn't take enough of it. There we go. I also use epoxy for this. I prefer the super glue, it's just a lot easier to use. Not quite as messy. And once you have the body glued together, you can now do something about the tail. So at the tail I kind of have this loose little flap of foam. So I'm basically going to do the same kind of thing. I'm going to put a little bit of glue at the back end of this body. I'll kind of pull the tail up into the body and just lay a little bit of glue inside of it. Pull all the fibers up into the body and I'll glue the entire thing together. Got to be a little patient with some of this glue. It takes about 30 seconds or so to really harden. There we are. Just make sure you're nice and rigid everywhere you need to be. Now we're going to trim a little bit around the eye. I'm actually going to take my scissors. I'm going to trim some of that foam away from the eye. And then, if you really want to clean it up, you can take a razor blade and do a nice clean cut at the bottom. Being careful you don't cut too deep and cut into your thread. You can kind of clean up the edges a little bit. We're going to paint over most of this with some epoxy or resin. So don't worry if you left a few kind of unfinished edges. It's not the end of the world.
There we are. And there is the start to our crease fly. I don't like that edge I did. I'm going to try that once more. Just get in there a little. There we go. That's a little better. A little bit straighter edge. All right. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to lay down some color on this fly. I'm just going to take a Sharpie and I'm just going to go over the very top of the fly with a little bit of blue marker. You can use some Pantone markers, some Copic markers, or some Sharpies. Any type of permanent marker will really do the trick. And you got to be careful that you don't go too far down the body of the fly. You just kind of want to do the top of the fly here. There we go. Now we're ready to put down some glue. For that, I'm going to use a little bit of Loon Hardhead in pearlescent white. Kind of has a bait fish white look to it. Give it a good shake. It's going to take a couple coats. I'm just going to do kind of a first layer here, or base coat. I'm actually going to take my tool. I forgot about my little tool. I cut a little plastic piece there and I'm going to stick that inside my crease fly and that'll kind of help keep it open and allow the, the air to kind of stay in there and that's what gives this fly the popping action. You can really use anything to kind of go in there and prop it, prop it open. But I'm going to give this fly a good thick first layer can also put this on a fly turner as well or dryer that really helps evenly dry the fly the first coat is kind of the hardest because you have to get it all evenly put on to the fly and sometimes this pearlescent white likes to clump a little bit. So what I do is I kind of just brush it for the first few minutes here to kind of keep it spread out. Once it starts to dry, it'll start to kind of sit where it needs to, and it'll sit more evenly as it starts to dry. So we'll just kind of keep evenly brushing it on here. You'll see it start to kind of coagulate and sit together. Just kind of keep brushing it. This fly, you can also use foil for this fly. You can take an adhesive back piece of foil. You can wrap it around the foam. That'll also help give the fly its color and shine. Or you can do a couple quick coats of this stuff. Or you can just leave it the color of the foam and just lay a layer of epoxy or hardhead over the top of that. I usually like to do a couple layers of whatever glue I'm working with. It just gives it a more even look also makes the fly more durable as well with a couple coats. You can see here it's starting to set up just a little bit. Starting to spread out more evenly. That's what I want my first coat to, to do. And once you have your first coat finished, 
you can put it on your fly dryer or upside down in your vise and let it dry and then we'll do a second coat and we'll come back to it. Now that we have our two coats of our pearlescent white hardhead on our body, I'm just going to take the fly and just reposition it in the vise, kind of at an upward angle. And we're going to paint basically the lips and mouth uh, of the fly. And you can do this with either red, orange, uh, I'm actually going to use pink. And we're just going to paint the inside of the mouth as well as kind of the outside lip as well. So I'm just going to take my brush and just kind of carefully paint the outside lip of the fly. And if I kind of get a little bit on the outside, you can just take your finger and rub it out of there. And then once you have that all finished, you can just let it dry and then we'll finish with the the eyes of the fly. Now that we have the body finished and we have the mouth painted pink. I have two coats on the body um, and just one coat up there by the mouth. Uh, we're ready to apply the eyes and you can use really any type of eyes. You can use flat um, kind of mylar eyes. You can use a set of 3D eyes. Uh, whatever your favorite uh, kind of eye is will do the trick. And we're just going to take a little dab of super glue and we're just going to place it right around where we want the eye to sit. And you're going to just take your eye and apply it to the body. And I like to use like the back of a bodkin to just kind of take the eye and press it pretty firm down into the foam. And you just hold it there for several seconds until it's dry. It usually takes 20 to 30 seconds. And you should have a finished little eye there. And you do the same thing on the other side. You have to be real careful that you get them even. You want to make sure that they're lined up the same on one side as it is on the other. So all you do is do the, basically repeat the same thing. Put your dab of super glue there. And take your peel your eye off of the We're basically so what I like to do is I like to just gently place the eye first, and then I'll just kind of line it up and just kind of scoot it around with my bodkin. And then once I have it where I want it, I can just glue it and press down on the side. And the last thing you can do, some guys will try to make it a little more durable by adding a coat of UV resin to the entire fly again, or epoxy. You can even use hardhead, but they do like an, a clear overcoat, and that'll help make the fly a little more durable. But that is essentially a finished little crease fly.